celebrating Danny and his stories and what an unusual person he was and uh, one of the geniuses of Seven Card Stud. Uh, and uh, he was just a terrific guy along all this. Most of the stuff that uh, Eric and Mike and Mary said, I was thinking about myself. But uh, my thoughts were, to uh, keep things simple, was um, when Danny and Chip first came to town in the 70s, first of all, they didn't mention this, but they used to play 12 hours on and 12 hours off between the two of them. And the games would oftentimes go around the clock and they were there all the time. You had to go through them to make any money and it wasn't easy. So that's how they started. They made a million dollars plus before they started look back probably within the first year and the rest is history but they were great friends and terrific players and even though Chip became maybe the most well known Danny in the area of seven stud was second to none he was what I would call a genius of seven card stud and um, he proved it and one of the things he brought to town when he first came here that none of us had seen before is uh, splitting pots and uh, he was the master of that beyond all masters. All of us learned from him and became proficient ourselves, but he was always the king. He always had the new wrinkle that nobody would heard of, that maybe he hadn't heard of until he does it. He was uh, such a quick uh, thinking type person. So I'm going to just give a quick example of splitting pots, Danny style. First, I'm going to give you the simple thing that everybody knows about that isn't all that complicated, and then I'll give you the uh, uh, Danny version of uh, splitting the pot. In this uh, story, he has open aces. That's all he has. He gets called on the end. This is standard ABC, splitting the pot type stuff. He made a quick look at his last card. He knew that's all he had. He, of course, says to the unknown player that doesn't know Danny from who knows who. Danny, of course, tells the guy he's got aces up, he's got a four flush, he's got a straight flush draw, he's got this, he's got that. And he knows the guy called with just two pair. And Danny, of course, says to him, I've got all this, I know you've made a flush, I'll split the pot with you, I've got a lot of outs against you, but I will split the pot even though I know you haven't beat it. Well, Danny really knows the guy just has two pair which Danny has already looked at his last card, and that's all he's got, which is on board. So the guy thinks he's stealing from Danny and thinks he's making a real sharp move and he splits the pot with Danny. But that sort of standard split the pot stuff as all of us sort of know. But now I remember one day that I was watching him, and again, he always had new wrinkles that nobody would ever seen before. So now here he's against uh, one of these uh, unknown uh, people uh, that don't realize the type of uh, quick-witted, uh, sharp type poker player he is. And so he's betting along in this hand. And he knows the guy's a uh, small pair, or Danny has nothing. No pair, no draw, no nothing. He just knows that he bets all the way and bets on the end. As long as the guy doesn't make two pair, he's going to win. And, of course, we know he's an underdog to make two pairs, so Danny's got himself as a favorite as he bets his hand out. So on the end, he bets, and the guy calls. So now he knows he cannot win. Now the guy's got two pair. Danny's got no pair, no draw. Danny has made a quick look at his last card. He caught a queen, which made him queen. He turns the queen over, the guy doesn't know where the queen came from, but knows it's his last card. And Danny says, I've got queens, i got live cards, i got a good chance to win this pot from you. If you split the pot, I think you'd be making a good deal. And the guy split the pot. That's Danny Robbins. Nobody would think of something like that, at least I would. And he had, I mean, he had nothing. And he got a guy with two pairs to split the pot with him. He was the expert of splitting pots, and he taught all the top players, as I would see it, how to split pots, but he was always one step ahead of us. I remember one day in the Dunes in the 80s, we played 150 and three, and Danny was in the game and I was in the game, and 
we all have days when we win a lot of pots and win a lot of money and have our hot day. But I'll never forget this day. For about a four hour period, Dan never lost a pot. I mean, if he put more than $200 in his pot, he won every pot. Now that's impossible, but it wasn't with Dan. Besides having a good day where he won, say, 15 pots in a row normally, there was another seven to 10 <coughs> pots that he didn't have the best at. Well, you know what happened on those pots. He only got half. <laughs> <laughs> and it was an amazing thing just to watch how he would invent a story, tell a story, make someone believe him, and they would say, well, just half the stuff he says are true. I have no win. <laughs> and, and then they'd, they'd split with him thinking they're uh, doing something with him, and they never even knew the, list, the last card. He switched cards around, and he was just a genius of that. He was always spur of the moment, always a terrific uh, uh, way of doing it, and uh, fast talking, where these people didn't have a chance with him. If he had been a lawyer or something else, he'd have been the best in the country, because his ability to think on his feet and talk was second to none. And as I remember, nobody ever got upset with him. They were happy to play with him and happy to deal with Danny Robinson. They didn't know he was going to become uh, the all-star he became. One other thing on splitting pots, he would, he would split